We are now on the downward slope of computer science A when we're beginning unit seven. We're down to just four units left. Uh, this topic is array lists, which is one of the bigger units that we have left, um, but there's also a couple of shorter units in here. And so we are really getting closer to the end. Um, and this is the last topic that after we cover it, we will now know all the things that are on our Java quick reference. Uh, so we're, we are getting close, um, which is great. So array lists, what they are, uh, is, is a way of storing information. And so the question naturally is, well, we already have arrays. So like, what's the difference between array and array list? So what we're going to actually start off with is talking about arrays and talking about the limitations of arrays. And then we're going to dive into array lists and their differences. So, uh, let's say that, um, I was going to, well, let's just make an array of something. So I'm going to make an array of strings. Uh, this array of strings is going to hold um, a set of students. And so we all know that if I make a new um, array of students, the way that I do this is that arrays are just, well, they're like objects, but they're not objects, but really they're, they're objects at the end of the day. And so I'm going to use the keyword new to make a new place over in memory. And then I am going to uh, actually make a new um, string array. So that string array is going to, we're just going to put um, three students in here. And what you'll notice here is that, you know, so they're kind of like objects. I'm not calling a constructor here. This is something different. Uh, and it's because these arrays are something that are just fundamental to Java. And I'm pointing this out now because we're going to compare and contrast this to array list later, but emphasizing the fact that arrays are just these fundamental things. They're special things within Java, but they pretty much are objects. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some students to this. And so I've created a, a list here of three students. Um, Student number one is, so students at index zero is going to be, I don't know, Ted. And then we are going to have students at index one. And this is going to be, I don't know, what do we go with? I'm trying to think of a theme. Oh, I got a theme. All right. Uh, JD is going to be the second one. And then I've got my last student here. And this last student, student at index two, its name is going to be uh, Perry. Perfect. All right, so these are my three students, which is great. They're all in this class together. I am going to, throughout this, want to be able to print out all these students. So I'm going to go ahead and take a step aside here and just create a static method. So public static. It's going to return nothing. And I'm just creating this so that I can print out uh, my array and see what's actually in it. And so it's gonna take in an array as a, an argument or as a parameter or an argument, I guess it's fine. Uh, so temp is what it's gonna be called. And so I'm just gonna write a quick for loop here. Integer i equals zero, i is less than temp.length. So I'm getting a bunch of good stuff in here that we haven't seen in a little bit about uh, arrays and just how I access, how I, uh, create them, how I put information in them, how I access the length, and then in a second here, how I actually access items. So we're getting a nice whole rundown of all this. So I'm going to system out print line. And this is going to be, so we're just going to say item at index, and then we'll grab what i is. Oh, that's a big i. And then we will, so at index, and then we'll have a column in a space. And then we'll actually print out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just make sure all this is hunky dory. Um, I'm going to go ahead and print out my array. So I'll call it print array. And then what is this going to be called on students? So if everything goes as planned, this should just print out my array of students one at a time, Ted, JD, and Perry. So I'm gonna do that, Java compile. And this is, what do I call this fun with arrays? Array lists. And it's always, you know, we're off to a good start here when I 
don't have any compile errors. All right, perfect. So those are my three items, Ted, JD, and Perry, which is great. So let's say that I want to start making some changes to this. So let's say that in my, in my class of students here, my group of students, I have to be careful to use the word class because it's not a class in the computer science sense, but in my group of students, I want to add a new student. Well, so how do I do that? The only way for me to add a new student is to actually create a new array. Because once I've, I've created my, my student's uh, array, there are just three items in it, and that's it. And so my issue is that an, an array is, is static. I don't mean static in the computer science sense. I mean static in the fact that it's un, it doesn't change, right? I can change the items in it, but I can't actually change the properties of it, for example, how many items are in there. So uh, how could I go about doing this? Well, I could very easily write a method that uh, you know just copies over every item. You know, in fact, we're going to do that. Let's, uh, just for kicks, we're going to write a new method. It's going to be public, it's going to be static. It's going to return a string, a string array. And this is going to be called add. Add. It's going to take in a string array, and then it's going to add in an item. So a string array, so this is going to be a temp again. And then I want to take in a new string, the thing that I'm adding to it. So what I'd actually have to do, it comes in three parts. Uh, I am going to have to uh, create a new array of one greater length. I have to copy everything over, and then I have to add in that last item. So the way this is going to work is that I'm going to make a new array here real quick. Uh, it's going to be, so this is my string array. Uh, we'll call it temp2. And what do I want to do? I want to make a new array here, strings. And how many items do I want in there? I want the length of temp dot length and then plus one. I want it to be one greater than what I had previously. And then I'm going to copy everything over. So for loop and then I'm going to, let's see, so start at i equals zero. i is less than, okay, so not the length of temp2, but the length of my original temp. Uh, temp dot length. I want to copy over all those items and then i plus plus. Marvelous. And so then I'm going to add each item over this. So temp2 at i will get the value of temp at i. So this will copy over every single item that's already in my array. And then the only thing that's left to do is to actually assign that very last value. So what the, what is the very last value? Well, it's going to be temp2.length minus 1. That very last value has to be uh, equal to um, what is the item that I'm copying over here, and that is addition. Perfect. Um, I feel like something went wrong with my coloring. That's fine. And the last thing I want to do is just return this. So I'm going to return whatever temp2 is. Okay. So again, what I've done here is I've created a new array called temp2. And I've made it just the length of my old array plus one. And then I've copied every single item over. And then I've added my new thing, and now I'm going to return it. So if I want to add a new student here, I can do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, hey, students is going to be actually equal to, and I'm going to take add what was in students uh, previously and add to it. Uh, oh man, I'm forgetting now. Turk. Here we go. Perfect. I think it's, I don't know, that's how you spell it, but close enough. And then I will print this all out. I'm going to print this all out just to make sure everything worked out the way that I did. So I'm going to call print array again. I could have copied this down. Oh well. Bam. All right. So let's save this and see if this actually did what I wanted to. Fingers crossed. All right. How many are. <gasps> I am on a roll today. Okay. So I had my initial rate Ted, JD, Perry. And then I wanted to actually add in a new item. Okay, so here's the issue. Every time I want to add a new item, though, I have to copy everything over. And so we haven't really spent a lot of time uh, talking about running times yet. We are going to very soon. The issue, though, is that I have to go through every single item every time. I want to just add one item, but I have to go through every single item to be able to do this. There must be a better way, and, and there is. Um, so we're going to, to get into what the real better way is, but 
first we're going to talk about the pseudo better way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and comment all this out just so that we can reference it. Um, but we can forget that it exists here for a little bit. So that better way, pseudo better way, is what's called array lists. So as I already told you, uh, arrays are something that are built into uh, Java. They're this fundamental thing that you know has all these special different things like this special notation. We don't see these brackets anywhere else. You know, we don't uh, we don't define anything else this way. Like this is all unique because arrays are this special thing in Java. And so there's when Java was first created, that was one of the things that, that existed in it. So somewhere along the line, someone decided that, well, what we really need here is a better way of doing things. And so they created a new class that's called array list. So I can create new items in array list. Now, if you um, remember back from our JavaScript days, if that was something that you've seen, uh, we worked with lists which were really array lists. So we had the ability to append items. We had the ability to remove items. We had the ability to uh, add items somewhere into the, into the list. And so we had the ability to do all those things. And then what we were really working with at the time were array lists. So here's what they look like. So an array list, um, just like anything else, if I wanna create a new one, I'm gonna use the keyword array list. Uh, but the way that, just like when we create a new um, array, we have to tell it what type of array it is, we do the same thing here. And this is kind of unique to array, well, kind of unique to array list. Uh, I am going to use these uh, pointy brackets uh, to tell it what I'm going to be storing. In this case, I'm going to be storing a set of strings. Okay, So if I want to create a new array list, I can do that. I'm going to tell it that, that there are strings that's going to be storing. I'm going to make a new set of students. And I have it equal to new. And then, so the array list class, it's a class. And so I'm going to have to use the constructor, the default constructor, to actually create a new item. And so the way that looks is just like any other object that we declare uh, or initialize. And that's going to be array list. And then again, I'm going to say that this is going to be of strings. And then this is my constructor. So I've got two parentheses on here. And that will create for me a new array list. Now, it's worth noting this is a default constructor. I could also, if I wanted to create, like if I want to say specifically I've got five items in here, I could do that. However, I'm going to show you what we typically do uh, to add items to it. And you might be shocked to know this, but to add items to it, I'm going to use the add function or the add method that ArrayList have available to them. So I've created my new ArrayList here, students. I'm going to go ahead and add to it. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to say students. And because this is a class, and because this is and just a regular class, this is not you know, an array with all their unique you know fancy things. Um, I'm going to say students dot, and then my function is add. So if I just want to append onto the end of my uh, my my array list a new item, I can do that. And so I can go ahead and say my first item is going to be Ted, and add that on. And then so this is the big difference now is that I'm adding items to this. Array lists are not static in their sizes. They are dynamic. And so I can change how many items are here. Uh, so I'm just going to add in my students just like I had before. Uh, how many do I have? Ted, JD, and Perry. One too many. That. Uh, so Ted. And Perry. So what I've done here is every time I've added a new item, I've actually increased the size of this array list. And if you don't believe me, that's fine. We'll check it. Uh, let's go ahead and make a new function down here, which is going to print. Okay. So uh, one thing that, let me go ahead and pull this up really quick uh, over here on the other screen. I'll swing it over here. Uh, but my Java quick reference, Java quick reference, quick reference for the Java. Here it is. Okay, my Java quick reference, um, this is the last thing that's down here, right? My array list items. So what I've done so far is I've used the add function, which adds an object uh, to, to my list or my array list. And there's a couple things I'm going to use here that are going to be super useful. 
There is a size function that I'm going to use here in a second whenever I talk about um, or go into my for loop. I need to know the size. Um, if I ever want to get an item, I can do that. And that's what I'm going to need right now. You'll notice there's other methods here that we'll use later. So like if I add one, I want to add something into my list someplace, I can do that. Um, if I want to set, um, you know, a specific item to something else, I can do that. And if I want to remove an item, I can do that. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Um, write this function here. So public and then static. And this is, uh, it's going to print things out. So public static void. And then we're going to call this add. Um, well, actually, we can just call it add. And we're just going to um, overload it, which is fine. Uh, so it's going to take in an array list. What type of array list? Specifically ones that take in strings. Um, and I'm going to call it temp. Or sorry, not add. I'm not adding. I'm printing. Golly. Okay. Uh, print. There we go. I don't need to add. Add already exists. Print array list. Okay. And it's going to take in my array list, which would be um, an array list of what? They are strings. And then um, we'll just call this temp. All right, so I'm going to do essentially what I did here. In fact, I'll just copy it down because why not? Control C, Control V. Um, okay, so what are the changes here? So I'm still going to use I to go through my list, except now temp okay, doesn't have a length property like arrays do. If I want to get the length of it, I instead I'm going to use a method that's going to return an integer. It tells me how many items are in it, and that method is size. Size is going to return, me, uh, return for me the length of the list. I'm still going to increment by one each time, system not that print item at index i is. Okay, so if I want to get an item, then I can no longer use these brackets because those are special for uh, my arrays. And so what I'm going to use is temp.get and then the item at i, right? And so that's going to return that value. So now I can use this uh, to actually print out what's in my list. So I can do that. Uh, we are going to print array list. And what are we printing? We're printing students. Okay, save. Run over here. Go ahead and come. Oh, darn it. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, this was actually planned. You won't believe me, I guess, now, but this was planned. So uh, I got an error, right? Um, what is this error that was thrown? How do I deal with this? Uh, so at this point in time, now that we're this far in, we should be starting to figure out what it means if I have cannot find symbol. Okay, cannot find symbol means essentially one of two things. Number one, you made a typo, which I might have, but I don't think I did in this case. And then number two, it could mean the fact that, well, it doesn't know what, Java doesn't know what I'm talking about because I'm referencing some type of class that um, it's, it's unaware of, right? And so here's the thing, going back to what we've been talking about this entire time, uh, you know, arrays are this thing that are inherent in Java. They are these, these fantastic things that are like in the fundamentals of Java from the very beginning. Array lists though are not, so we have to import them. Okay, so where are they at? They're in the utilities of Java. So I can import java.util.array list, and now I can use them. This is a commonly forgotten thing though. I didn't forget it this time. Uh, but it's a commonly forgotten thing that we need to need to import this because it seems like it's like array list should just be a standard thing in Java, but they're not. So go ahead and compile again, fantastic, and run it. And I have my three people there, Ted and JD and Perry, which is fantastic. So the question is then, so what are these other things I can do? So our issue last time was that we wanted to add a new person. So we wanted to add Turk to... Uh, to my list of students. So we had to write this whole function down here. And the issue was that I had to run through, I had to copy over every item in the in my um, array. I don't have to do that now, right? I can just go ahead and add an item. So if I want to, I can students, students dot add. Um, now let's say though, hypothetically, that uh, this is not just a list of students. These are a list of my students um, in my, my favorite students in order. And I forgot to add Turk to the list initially, but he is definitely my second favorite student. So let's say I want to add him at index one. I can do that. So I can add at index one. 
What am I going to add? I'm going to add, oh, I already forgot who my second favorite student was, Turk. We're going to add him to the list. And so what's going to do here is he's going to be at index one. So I'm going to go Ted and then Turk and then everything else will get shifted down. JD is now going to be at two and Perry is now going to be at three. So if I go ahead and print these out again, that is what I should see. Fingers crossed. Marvelous. Okay, so that's what I see. So this is my original one. Oh, that's not quite. And this is my second one. I got Ted, Turk, JD, and Perry. Fantastic. Now I can keep doing things here. There's more things I can do. So we've already looked at adding an item onto the ends, like appending it. We've added an item at a certain place. I've gotten an item at a certain place. Now we can also set an item. So let's say that, uh, uh, shoot, what is that? Is it mm, Jordan? I don't remember. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that, well, JD is, has decided that he doesn't want to go by JD anymore. He wants to go by his full name, which is, ah, uh, golly, I really don't remember. I think it's Jordan. So what I can do here is I can change an item. Now, this isn't special because I could change items in my arrays, no big deal. Uh, but this is how we do it with array lists. And so what I'm going to do is um, students dot, and then to change a specific item. So I can use the set method which I have to pick an index, which in this case I'm changing the thing at, so JD is at index two now, and I'm gonna change his name. It's not Jordan, it's, um, I'm gonna go with Jordan, Jordan. I'll figure it out later, it'll come to me. Uh, save this, fantastic. And what we'll see then if I go and print this out again, I'm gonna print this out again, control C, control V, I really should stop printing out so many things. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and get rid of that. What I should have is that name changed. And I do. Uh, so Ted, Turk, Jordan, Perry. Fantastic. Okay. Um, then, let's see, I think there's, I'm forgetting one thing. Oh, remove. Okay, so this is, a, as I said, this is a list of my favorite um, students. I have decided for whatever reason, Ted is no longer one of my favorites. And I want to remove him. So how do I do that? And that's another easy thing I can do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say students.remove. And then what I'm going to remove here is um, the, I need to give it an index. So in this case, the index is zero. If I do that, this is the last method that exists on our quick reference, I think. Ta-da, all right. So these are all the different functions I have in array list. We've referenced a lot of them. Add here, add a specific index, add to the end, set a specific value, remove a specific value. I used get someplace in here, get, here it is. And I use size someplace in here as well, okay? So these are all the different methods that are in our Java quick reference that you're gonna expect to be able to use um, in a, or on the, the AP exam. Let's note a couple other things here real quick. Uh, thing number one, add returns a Boolean. Um, usually you just won't use it, but if you wanted to, you could. Uh, that Boolean is just going to, well, it's always going to return true. It's going to return um, the Boolean value of whether or not an item was successfully added to the list. You don't have to really know why that is. Um, just suffice it to say that it will always be successfully added. So uh, it's always going to return true. Add doesn't return anything. Uh, the, the other one doesn't. Um, get obviously returns the item that I'm looking at and then set if I change a value it will return to me what the previous value was um, which is nice and then if I remove a value it will also return that value to me as well so whenever I'm removing or uh, setting different things um, it'll return to me the like thing that was previously there which is which is nice and useful now, one thing that I haven't touched on, and this is going to be a big difference between arrays and array lists, that you'll notice that every time that I have like an item that I'm adding uh, or, or removing, it's always going to return an object. And so the reason that's important is because my array lists only know how to store objects. So let's go ahead and take note of a couple things first. Um, okay, so I've got arrays. No. I just want an array, array, space, okay? And then I've got array list. Yep. 
so the differences between these two things, as we already said, arrays are static, uh, not in the computer science sense, but meaning that they don't change. Um, they're kind of like fundamental to Java. They are they are objects, um, but slash uh, not objects, right? They kind of are like they're special. They're just unique, you know. Um, they can store anything that we want. Store uh, primitives and uh, or objects. Like they're good with whatever. Okay, no big deal. My array lists, on the other hand, are different in these ways. Okay, so instead of being static, they are dynamic. Uh, they are not fundamental to Java. We had to import them, all right, uh, because they are their own class, which means that they have their own methods that can be called upon them, which is nice. Uh, but they were added later. They were not inherently in Java to begin with. Um, so they're a class. Uh, and what they do is they can only store references to objects. It's the only thing that they have available to them, okay? And also, and this is gonna be maybe counterintuitive, they are slower. Here's why, okay? So what we just did here was, um, I'm gonna come back to this only storing objects thing here in a second, because that's a big issue that we're gonna need to deal with. Uh, they're slower, here's why. So before, when we created our array, we created uh, Ted and then JD and then Perry, or we didn't create them, we just stored those values. If I wanted to add a new value, I had to write this function here, add, which had to copy everything over and then and then add an additional thing. And that took a lot of time, right? I had to look at every single item. Like th there's only, you know, three people in my array initially, but what if I had, you know, hundreds or thousands or I guess hundreds or thousands, not big, millions or billions of items in my array. Well, so you might think, well, array lists are great. Look, I just, I don't have to, I just do one thing. I just add, I just add, I just add, and then it's just done. Okay, here's the secret. Here's the unfortunate secret. So as I said, array lists are just like this class that were written at some point. So array lists behind the scenes, what they are, are just arrays. So whenever I use this add method, behind the scenes, what's happening is that I'm potentially just copying over values and adding them into a new array. So an array list just has a, an array inside of it. So I'm not saving any time by using an array list as far as my running time goes. I'm saving time on my end, on the programming end. If I use an array list, I don't have to, I don't have to write this function, right? Uh, so there's a bunch of different functionality that comes with array list, but they're still doing all the work behind the scenes. So they are a little bit slower to work with sometimes because they're just a little bit more robust. We're gonna talk about ways later kind of speed up some of this stuff uh, in, in, in using arrays. But yeah, behind the scenes, array lists are just arrays, unfortunately. Now, um, let's go back to this uh, point that I made earlier. They can only store objects. They can only store objects. So you might be asking yourself, well, what, what if I want an array list of primitive values? What if I wanna have integers or I wanna have booleans or whatever? And the thing is, you really have to dig deep to remember this but we can do that. We know how to store primitive values as, uh, as, um, as objects. And if we don't remember how to do that, am I gonna uncomment some of these? Oh, no, just double comment it. Uh, so how do I do that? And the answer is wrapper classes, okay? Um, you guys remember back in the day, we had these wrapper classes at the time. It's like, why would I ever want a wrapper club? Why would I want to store an int inside of this integer object? Well, here, here's one of your answers. Here's one of the reasons why we do that. So um, let's say I want to store a list of numbers. I can do that by saying, um, okay, so I'm going to make an array list. List. Uh, it is impossible. I cannot do this. This is not a thing. I cannot make an array list of ints. I cannot store primitives. What I can do though is make an array list of integers. Okay, integer was my wrapper class. It's just an object and each object with stores inside of it is a primitive value. So I can make a new list of integers. These are um, just my list of numbers here. And so new and then array list and then integers, and uh, I can do all the things that I did previous. oh, this is a constructor. I can do all the things I did previously. I can uh, numbers.add, 
and I can add five to this, and then I can system dot out dot ooh, out oh my gosh out dot print line, and then I can get numbers at zero numbers dot get zero. Okay, uh, so I can do that with any of the things. I can do this with characters. I can do this with uh, booleans. I can do this with doubles. Uh, whatever it is, I just have to use my wrapper class to actually be able to store these items. Okay. Okay, now is the time for me to pause and make sure that I have told you all the things I wanted to tell you. We've talked about the differences between arrays and array lists. Uh, we have talked about how to import. We have talked about the constructor, we talked about wrapper classes, talked about size, add, add, remove, set, and get. Um, the one thing that I haven't mentioned, and that's worth noting, and this hopefully should have been an obvious statement to you, is that it's also just worth keeping in mind that um, you have to be careful about the fact that since array lists always store objects, they're storing references to objects. So a lot of times when you store items into array lists, what that means is that you're not creating a new version of that thing. So if you make changes to it elsewhere, it makes a change to that item in my array list as well. Also, it's worth noting that an array list is an object, which means that if I pass in an array list for a function, that means that it is being passed by, passed by reference. So if I actually change that value in my array list, it is going to change the array list itself which hopefully should be a clear thing for us just because it is an object. So that makes sense. So that's all the thing about or all the things that I want to tell you right now about array lists. Array lists are super useful. We've kind of just scratched the surface. As of right now, you might still be looking at this as like, well, I could do most of these things with arrays anyway, um, just with a little extra work. And you're right up to this point, but we're going to see later that there are going to be some more things I can do with array lists that are going to make my life uh, considerably easier. So. That's array lists, a super powerful uh, storage device in Java that we're going to use more in the future.